Hello, today we're going to play with particle system. So I will just press play and I'll show you what are we going to create today. So whenever you click your left mouse button, we will get instantiated the particle system that will look like the burst or you know some kind of explosion. So this is the effect we are going to achieve today. So I will just, maybe I will leave it as it is. We'll just create a new particle. So in order to do it, just right click, effects and particle system. So we've got it. As you can see straight away, some particles are flying in the air. We've got it on. We can pause it or stop it, but we can play it. And there is a looping option on, which I would advise you to keep it on because if it's not on, you would have to keep playing it all the time on your own and this is faster and quicker to have this looping on. I will play it so it will constantly be, be playing. Let's just try to shape it so it's got a nice circular shape. But before we get into it, let's zero the X rotation like so. And now maybe let's make this shape first of all. So you just click on this tab called shape and here instead of con we want to use a circle. Maybe we can decrease the radius of it to the minimum value and we can change the mode from random to burst spread. Let's leave it as it is for now and let's play with some other values. Maybe let's go to emission because we don't want to rate over time. We want to make it zero and we want to burst because it should look like the explosion. So just click plus and maybe let's increase it to about 60. And as you can see straight away, we've got a nice effect. Let's go up because we've got plenty of options here in the particle system tab. And the duration is definitely too large as the explosion should be a rapid, a quick explosion. So let's make it a one. And here the start lifetime, we can decrease it to about one as well. Now, what else we can do? We can change the start speed really, so it's more rapid. But as you can see, as we increase this value, our circle is getting bigger and bigger, but we will fix it very soon. Let's make our start lifetime to 0.8 maybe. Let's do a start size. We can increase it so our particles are a bit bigger. Maybe let's change the color. We created some red color before. Maybe let's use some blue this time. So we've got a bit different result than the one I showed you. Here we can change the simulation speed so it will be like more rapid, but I will leave it on one at the moment. And let's see some other values that we can change. The emission is already set, so let's just collapse it. And there is some limit velocity over lifetime, so you can click on it to turn it on. We have a nice damping option. So if we start increasing it, you can see straight away that we start faster and then our particles are getting damped, which is slowing down really. So maybe let's increase it a bit more to leave it as it is. And then let's play with some other values as well. Maybe we can change color over lifetime as well. So just click on it and activate it. Click on the color tab. And here we can decide what colors do we want. We want to have a full opacity because on the top, you can, if you click on this marker on the top, you can see there is an alpha channel, but we want to leave it full opaque, which is 255. But at the end, we want to decrease this opaque. So it's getting more transparent, like if our particles were disappearing. So let's just slide it left. And as you can see, straight away, you can see the difference. So we want to start, maybe we will add some more blue to it, like so. And in the end, we might leave it as it is if you do want to, 
but we can change this color so it is a bit different. I think I will do this purple like color. I like it. So let's leave it as it is. And we might change some size over lifetime as well. As you can see, we've got another tab you can click on and activate. And if you click on this graph, you can decide how this size should change. At the moment, it will start small and get bigger, but we want to see it otherwise. So we want to start big and then get it smaller. But maybe I will just use this one. And the last thing I would like to show you is that you should go to the render tab and sometimes if you use some backgrounds and other stuff in your project, then you want your particles to be on the top of others. So here in this section on the very bottom, you can choose a sorting layer or ordering layer. So we uh, might increase it to five, for example, to be sure that this is rendered on top of other objects in your scene. At the moment we don't have any, so it doesn't matter. I just wanted to show you that just to be aware of this function so you can change it later on. And let's maybe just play our game and see how is this looking. And I think this is looking pretty good. Maybe increase the start speed. So okay, I like this effect and I will keep it this way. So in order to instantiate it later on, I will just stop it and I will turn on the looping off, reset other positions as well. So we have it reset. And now we want to make a prefab out of it so we can instantiate it later on. I will just call it a ring effect two maybe. And I will drag and drop it to our assets so we have a prefab out of it. And I will show you what do I have in my script to just instantiate it on the left click. So I attached my script to the effects manager. Here I've got the particle system attached to it. So I will attach this new effect to that field. And I will open the script to show you how I did it. We have to create a serialized field so we can make a reference to our prefab. And then we have to get a mouse position to instantiate it in that position. So this is it. We don't need this start method really, so we just get rid of it. We've got a method that is creating a new prefab. Maybe we'll attach some destroy method as well, so that our effect will be destroyed from the scene once we don't need it anymore. And our effect, if you click on it, you can see that the duration of it is 1 and the lifetime is 0.8. So if we just leave like 2 seconds, I will leave 2 seconds for it. So destroy and then G and let's give it a 2 seconds. So this is all about the performance and you know a good practice to destroy all the objects that you don't need in your scene. And in the update method we are checking if the left mouse button is clicked and if it is then we are assigning a new position to our mouse position. So we have to convert the screen position of our cursor to the word position where the prefab should be instantiated later on. We are changing the mouse position Z to zero because if we didn't do that, then our prefab would take the position of the camera and the camera position the Z position is minus 10 and we don't really want to do this. We want to have it on zero. That's why I assign mouse position Z to zero. And then we are creating the effect. So we are calling this method that we created beneath. So this is all when it comes to the script. So let's go back to the game. And of course we can remove it from the scene now because we created a prefab out of it. So when you click on the effects manager, you can see that new prefab has been added to the field. So now if we press play and click, we get this object. So this particle system instantiated whenever we click on the screen. And as you can see, after two seconds, all those effects are being destroyed and are no more in the scene.